Suspense. Mr. Cary Grant, as star of The Black Path of Fear, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Suspense. It was our first day in Havana. We'd taken a hack, an open horse-drawn carriage, and spent the afternoon driving around to see the sights. She was always crazy about Jade. So in Chinatown, we stopped in a little curiosity shop the driver steered us to. We bought a few gadgets there and started back toward the main part of the town. It was getting dark, and she snuck it up close to me there in the carriage. It's been a wonderful day, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. I was scared at first. A couple of times, I, I thought I saw him in the crowd there in Chinatown. Guess it was just my imagination. Oh, sure it was. He wasn't trying any rough stuff this far from his home base. He may be a little Caesar around his nightclubs back in Florida. But here in Cuba, he's just another alien that better not call, get, get caught carrying a gun. He said he'd get me if I ever left him. Hmm. No matter where I went. Nah, but he sent a radiogram wishing us luck. <laughs> That's what worries me. He didn't say which kind of luck. Alto, Pavel. Alto. Now, what's this, driver? It's Sloppy George. Big attraction in the Havana. Of course. Sloppy Joe's. Want to go in, darling? Why not? We can only die once. So I paid the coachman. We went into Sloppy Joe's. The place was jammed to the sidewalk line and so noisy you couldn't hear yourself think. It was like a football scrimmage when you moved in. And like sardines in a can when you stood still. And then suddenly the crowd divided in front of us like the Red Sea. And a little photographer came through using an old-fashioned tripod for a battering ram. He set up his camera and pointed it in our direction. I think that your and the lady would like a picture for to show their friends back in the estate. Oh, thanks. Oh, please, Scotty. Well, we've never had a picture taken together. Together? With 40, 100 people jammed up against us on all sides? Well, instead, maybe you come to my studio. Calle Barrio. It's not far. Oh, uh, no. All right, go on. Shoot it here. Ah, uh, well, I make a pause, please. Mm -hmm. Much green, you much love. Okay. <laughs> ah, bueno. What's the birdie? Hold it. <laughs> Ah, that is all. I have the picture. Here is my card. Take the cup. Hey. It should be ready tomorrow. Oh, come on. He's taking it now, darling. Well, come on, honey. Everybody's looking at it. Don't rush me, Scotty. Give me time. Hey, what is it? Why are you so limp? What's wrong? I knew we wouldn't make it. But what do we care? Part of a night better than none at all. He's. Stay with me a minute. It won't take long. Tony, what happened? What happened? Scotty, that, that was the first picture we ever had taken together. Let me know how it turns out. Oh, Eve. Eve, darling. She's dead. She doesn't move anymore. Somebody do something. She's been nice. Right here in my arms. <laughs> Havana is a fast town for anything. Love, life, and death, too. A minute ago, I'd been half of a honeymoon couple getting their first picture snapped by a little Cuban photographer in Sloppy Joe's. Now I was alone with a corpse in an empty saloon. But that didn't go on for long, either. There were cops there in half a minute, and finally a detective. This woman is dead. Yeah, I know. You were the man with her? I was the man with her. Mm. Your name? Hmm? Uh, Scott. Bill Scott. Mr. Scott, how long have you been in Havana? Uh, four hours. You quarrel with this girl here in this bar? Yeah. No, no. No, we were only in here long enough to have our picture taken. Uh, you were traveling together? That's right. Her name on her tourist card is Mrs. Edward Spinelli. Yeah. Where is Mr. Spinelli? Not where I'd like him to be, which is wrong. You are not being very cooperative, Mr. Scott. Okay, I'll tell you the whole story. She was a singer in a nightclub in Tampa, Florida. Spinelli owned the nightclub. He packed a gun, and so did the waiters in the joint. He gave her the choice between getting killed and marrying him. So she married him. And how did you meet her? I worked for Spinelli. I, I drove his car. You are not a chauffeur by profession. Are you Mr. Scott? No. I took the job to get her away from him. Is there anything wrong in that? Uh... 
the murder weapon, this knife. What do you know about it? What are you driving at? Is this your knife, Mr. Escott? No. No, but it's a pretty close match. I bought one just like it this afternoon in the curiosity shop. Wait a minute, I'll show you. I've got it in my pockets right now. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't get so excited. Okay, it's in this pocket. Now, fish it out yourself if you want to. There is no knife here. But there's got to be. It was a knife with a jade handle. Like that one you've got there with the monkey carved on it. But the monkey on the one I bought was holding his hands over his ears. There were three of them in the shop. You know the type. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I only know that you bought a knife this afternoon, that you no longer have the knife, and that a knife has been used to stab this woman. But it's not the same knife, I tell you. I can prove it. Give me a chance to prove it, will you? All right, Mr. Escar. I will give you a chance. So we went back to the shop where I bought the knife. Back to Chinatown. Inspector Acosta, that was the Cuban detective's name, questioned the old duck who sold it to me. You remember this man buying something in here this afternoon, Viejo? Uh, yes. Uh, gentleman buy knife. Ornamental knife. Uh, uh, knife with, uh, jade handle. Well, describe the jade handle. Uh, jade handle have monkey. We know that. Describe the monkey. Uh, pretty sure monkey hiding eyes. Uh, so. What? Uh, see no evil. You're crazy. What's the matter with you? What are you trying to do to me? I bought the one holding its ears. You know that. Theogene, this man's life may depend on what you are saying. Are you absolutely sure? Uh, a knife's come by trees. First one is sold to this gentleman. Other still got... I can't show you. Can't lie in your teeth. Listen, Acosta. So what if he shows you a set with that one missing? He's probably got a hundred sets in his storeroom. Only one set imported. Can show customs invoices. Uh, how did this man and the woman act when they came into the shop? Uh, a lady act a scare. Very scare. Uh, the man, a scot, to take out knife. He, uh, uh, failed to see if sharp. He, uh, uh, go over to Rady with it. He do like this, uh, for joke. Sure, well, it was a joke. Uh, Rady don't think it's joke. Oh, she turned very pale and at the scale. She say, uh, she say, go ahead. She say, she tired, waiting for to be stabbed with knife. Uh-huh. Well, it's got... Well, I, I think she did say something like that. She was afraid Spinelli was going to have her bumped off. Well, he did it. And this guy has been paid to frame me. Can't you see that? I am sorry, Mr. Escott, but I must place you under arrest for the murder of Mrs. Eve Espinelli. As we threaded our way back through Chinatown in the police car, I thought the whole thing over and came to a decision. The car was creeping along at a snail's pace through the crowded streets. I was in the middle, Acosta and the other dick on either side of me. The car fitted in the narrow lane like a cork in a bottle. If it came to a halt in front of the door of a building, and finally it did, just that. I bolted and they came after me, fast. The door I ducked into opened onto a pitch black hallway. I groped around until I found a flight of stairs and started climbing. Go ahead and shoot. They didn't start shooting right away. They had to spot me with their lights first. The rays from their pocket flashes kept stabbing past me like tracer bullets. The light could only shine in the straight light beam and I could go around the curve at the head of each flight. The third turn was the last. There was a square vent at the back of a passage and I could see the stars through it. There was a ladder of rusty, twisted chains with rotten wood cross pieces. I knew I'd never have time for it. And suddenly, the light hit me. But the bullet didn't. I ducked back in the shadows and turned the knob of the nearest door, tossing my head over to the foot of the ladder to make it look as if I lost it while climbing. I backed through the door into a room. In the dark room, I stood very still and listened. They were separating the case of the roofs along the block. Well, I was safe for a few minutes anyway. Try to figure out where I am. A room. A dark room. I strained my eyes into the blackness. Then... Something cool and metallic found the side of my neck. It was the business edge of a knife. Bueno. I... Uh, I, uh... No hablo espanol. No more verse. Now, take it easy, take it easy. I can't talk your language. Put that knife down, will you, miss? Take care, usted. Oh, easy. There's see. Understand? Come, honey. Out there on the stairs. I don't know how to say it. Police here. They're after me. Cops. Cops? Why didn't you say so before? I hate cops. Oh, you do talk English. I ought to. I've been in enough of your jails to take out naturalization papers. Get over 
over there. I'll, I'll do what I can for you. They're coming back. I better get out of here. Don't be a fool. There's 20 of them down in the street now. They sure must want you bad, Chico. Well, they say I killed my girl. They say wrong? They say very wrong. Another man took her away from you, eh? No, I took her away from another man. I didn't any fool of a policeman knows you didn't kill her. You never kill what doesn't belong to you, only what does. <laughs> Tell them that. Uh-oh, here comes payday. Quickly, get into the cot there. Cover yourself up. But... Do it, I tell you. Take off that shirt. Don't stop for buttons. Tear okay. it off. Now then, face the wall. Hey, what are you doing? Stay perfectly still and don't rub against the covers. No, don't move. Ha dicho un hombre muy macizo, un americano. No he visto a nadie. ¿Quién es ese? Mi hombre. Veamos. Está muy enfermo. Viruela. ¿Viruela? Sí, viruela. Mire la cuarentena. Es verdad. Viruela. Vámonos. Sí, señor. Buenas noches. Buenas noches, señores. Buenas noches. Bueno, ¿qué fue todo eso? Hey. What are all these red spots on me? I put them there with lipstick. All right. I told the cops you were my husband and I was smallpox. Oh, and they believed it? Why not? I showed them the quarantine sign on the door. Manolito, uh, that was my man. He died of smallpox in this room. Huh? Oh, don't be alarmed. It has all been disinfected. Oh. Well, uh, say thanks. Why did you go to bat for me like that anyway? Uh, different reasons. Flowers on a grave, I guess. Flowers on a... What does that mean? It's hard to explain. It's my way of doing something for someone that isn't around anymore, I guess. It's the only way I have. I don't know any other way. You see, I know what it is to lose someone you love, too, just like you. Oh, Manolito? Yes. He got the smallpox in jail. He came back here to me to die. What does your name, Guapo? Bill Scott. Is Scott? No, Scott, with an S. It's too hard to say. I'll call you Wapo. <laughs> that means handsome. Well, thanks. Uh, what shall I call you? Uh, around this neighborhood, they call me Media Noche. Media... It means midnight. Try it that way. Okay, midnight. They call me that because now I always hang around late by myself since he's gone. Well, midnight, I uh, I don't know what to say to you except thanks. No matter. Flowers on a grave. Yeah, well, I better, guess I'd better get going. What do you want to throw away all my hard work for? They spot you at the next corner. Well, I can't hang around here for the rest of the night. What's the matter with it here? Why, nothing, but... How do you figure on getting out of town, even if you do get out of here? I don't know. You don't know Havana, you don't know Cuba. You're on an island, water all around you. Yeah. You don't get away. Well, it looks like I stay in Havana. Oh, if I could only get hold of that photographer. Photographer? Yeah. There was a photographer in Sloppy Joe's. He was snapping a picture of us just when it happened. Hey, Mira, you think maybe this picture is the man who killed your sweetheart, eh? I'm pretty sure of it. Think, Guapo. What do you remember about this photographer? Well, he was just a typical cheap photographer for tourists. Hey, wait a minute. He said something about having a studio somewhere near Sloppy's. He gave me a card. Where is it? Calle Barrios? Yeah, that's it. Calle Barrios. You know that guy? Sailors go there with girls to get their pictures taken. His name is Pepe Campos. Oh, well, I gotta get that picture at midnight. I'll have to risk it. Well, one moment. I get you some other clothes. Here, uh, I think these fit you. Thanks. Manolito was one big sailor. Now listen, I tell you how to get away from here, over the Calle Barrio, so maybe the police don't see you. Yeah? You go right down the mouth of the alley and you turn to the right. That's his hand here, just a few steps from there. <laughs> so dark, I almost had to feel my way along the streets. And suddenly, out of nowhere, came a voice. There were two of them there, keeping the alley covered. I looked back the way I'd come. Someone was coming along slowly. I waited there, paralyzed. Marinero? Huh? Uh, what? Are you lonesome? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Look, you want to take a walk, sister? You say it. All right. Well, walk close to me like this. 
No, no, lean up closer. Right. Get your face up under mine. Yeah, that's it. Give me a little more affection. That's it. Now walk down this way with me, just past the corner, huh? Uh, you said it, big boy. You said it. Where should we go, honey? You said it. That's good. Here's the turn. Goodbye, sister. Cheap skit! Cheap skit, Ben Yako! Cheap skit! Cheap skit! I was afraid her yelling might attract the cops, so I took off down the street and then I ducked into an alley to catch my breath. I looked up, and there was a sign on a shop Campos Retrato Si Photographius. At first, I didn't get it. And then all of a sudden, I knew I was there. I opened the door and walked in. Si, senor? You, uh, you took a picture this evening of me and a lady in Sloppy Joe's. I want that picture. Oh, no me recuerdo. I do not recall, senor. There was trouble right afterwards, a lot of noise. Oh, see, si, see, si. I remember. I am just developing the pictures I have taken today. Uh-huh. Come with me. My dark room, the most latest equipment, Istman Kodak. Yeah, yeah, well, where's that picture? Uh, they are all in the bar. No momento. Oh, uh, this is the one. Wait a no, no, that's not. No. How long are they going to... Oh. Hey, wait a minute, I think that's it. Ah. Yeah, it's beginning to come through. Yeah, that's us. Yeah. Oh, someone leans over the lady's shoulder, no? Yes. Let's have some more light on the subject. Si. This is someone you know, senor? Yes, it's someone I know. His name Never is... Never mind the name, Scotty. I'll introduce myself. Spinelli. Stand over against the wall. You know, I'm glad you found this picture, Scotty. I was kind of nervous about having a thing like this floating around. You can understand my feelings. You surprised me, Spinelli. I didn't think you'd be brave enough to stab a woman in the back without your gorillas around to protect you. Don't make me angry, Scotty. I'm in a bad mood. I didn't know you were smart like you are either, Spinelli. I apologize. That was a cute trick, hiring a cab driver to steer us to that shop in Chinatown. But what I still can't figure out is how you switched those knives. I didn't. I still have the knife you bought. I frisked it out of your pocket. Would you like to see it first? Pretty, ain't it? You know, we've always had an eye for Jade, and this is definitely the best of the three. I hate to spoil such a pretty knife, but the revolver, it makes too much noise. I think I'll use the knife on you, too. I like things uh, symmetrical, like Romeo and Juliet, ain't it? Who's that? Don't move, Scotty. Bravo. Bravo, you in here? <laughs> His sweetheart not dead an hour and already he has a nervous. Midnight, get out of here, quick. This man is a killer. I'm not afraid of you, big boy. Keep away from me. Don't try any funny business. Me, hombre, he was just like you. He talked very mean, but he don't hurt me, not one little bit. I don't only talk big, sister. Now, look, I got a job to do here. I'll talk to you when I've shut your boyfriend's trap for good. My boyfriend? <laughs> Are you kidding? Huh? Go ahead, finish him off. He take a powder on me. He stinks. <laughs> Ran out on her, eh? <laughs> Why, Scotty, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> You're rich. You got many diamonds. I like you, mister. Stop mooching around. Midnight, I tell you, this guy's a killer. Now watch out. I shut up. How I bought it, big boy. Huh? Stick around, sister. I can use talent like yours. Kiss me, big boy. Uh, later, later. Right now. Or I yell very loud, make big trouble. <laughs> You're pretty hot stuff, aren't you, huh? You don't know another half from me, big boy. Huh? Come here. Mm. No! No, your chance! Grab the gun! Why, you dirty little stupid pigeon! Shut up, Spinelli. I've got the gun now. Oh, Scotty. I was only throwing a scare into you. I would have knocked you off right away if that's what I meant to do, wouldn't I, wouldn't I huh? What's it worth to you to stay alive, Spinelli? A hundred thousand dollars, Scotty. In the bank, right here in Havana. Just, uh, just let me get over to the table there. Check the bearer. No strings. A hundred thousand? Well, a hundred and fifty thousand, Scotty. What do you want? I want Eve back again. Alive. Two hundred thousand. Chicago account thrown in. Two hundred and fifty thousand. That's, that's a quarter of a million, Scotty. I want Eve. I want her back again. You can't bring the dead to life, Scotty. But you can be rich. Kill me and you get nothing but a murder rap. The picture don't show me sticking the knife in her. The knife don't mean nothing. Chin and the driver will never talk. You're, you're just fixing up a nice murder rap for yourself, Scotty. Stand over under the light. I don't want to miss. Scotty. No. Don't do it, Scotty. Scotty. Oh, you win. Scotty. 
Howdy. So that's the story. And so I've come to give myself up for the murder of Ed Spinelli. Well, Inspector, what are you going to do about it? About what? About what? About what I just told you, murder. I don't speak English so good. I often miss hearing things that I speak, especially when they are said too fast. I can say it slower. I just killed My a... English stinks today. I don't understand. You don't understand. I said... Please, would you mind not coming in here mumbling in this English of yours that I do not understand? Well, okay by me, if that's the way you feel about it. Well, oh, Miss, uh, Mr. Scott, uh, this girl, this Medea Notch. Medea? I mean, midnight? What about her? You know where she is? That girl, that woman, she has been raising Ken in my jail all night, all day yesterday. Well, what's she charged with? Well, my foolish officers questioned her and did not know any better than to put some charge all in a book. Uh, Senor Scott, we have been stuck with her ever since. She, she, she is like a, a hurry hurricane. Well, I'll agree with you there. Uh, Senor Scott. If you haven't got enough to bail her out, I'll pay her out of my own pocket. Anything to get her out. Well, midnight, it's over. Si, guapo. It is over. Hey. You got any idea where we're headed for him? A sloppy joke. The feet of an Americano in Habana walk always in the direction of a sloppy joke, no? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear it already. Will it come in with me midnight? No, Guapo. You go in alone. Well, won't you just have one with me, please? No. Why not? There's uh, someone waiting for you in there. Oh, that's crazy. I don't know anybody in Havana, except you. Someone is waiting for you in there, Guapo. Flowers on the grave, no? Flowers on the grave. <laughs> In sloppy joe. <laughs> Love makes any place beautiful. Even the sloppy joe. Go on, Guapo. Buy her a drink at the bar and tell her how that picture you took turned together out. You promised you would, remember? How do you tell something to somebody that's dead? In your mind, Guapo. Where she will always be. I'll try and tell her midnight. I'll tell her about you, too. Oh, no. no. She will be jealous. Stop when I tell her. You don't know women, Guapo. Maybe not. Well. Adios, Guapo. Goodbye, Midnight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.